Good morning, Trinity. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and it's uh, for this uh, Passion Palm Sunday, as we begin Holy Week, it's wonderful. We actually, I have, there's a congregation here in the, con you know, a few number. We have some wonderful liturgists this morning, people here to read the Passion story and to help lead in worship. Um, And so our, well, I guess Joey can't be doing that because he's sitting down here. Um, but we know Pross is serving as a Zoom co-host. Um, this is a little uh, a different service as, as you uh, hopefully read about in, uh, in your email this morning and on Friday. Um, we have a whole bunch of liturgists and... Uh, um, and some things coming up this week. There's no, we're, we finished the uh, Lenten study. So the only thing happening today besides worship is Trinity Kids tonight at six o'clock on Zoom. And then this week at nine, from nine to two on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, and then from 5.30 to 7.30 on Thursday and Friday, the children's Easter story walk. You wanna just go to the next slide, um, Randy? Um, this, uh, things that are going on this Holy Week is first uh, this, and I'll let, maybe if Nisha could unmute herself, she could uh, tell kids about this, um, what's available to children and their parents. Thank you, Steve, I'd be glad to. Um, Glennis Nellis has written this new book, Twas the Morning of Easter, and we have taken the book and put it into stations throughout the upper level of the church. And so families, you can come with your children, and it is a, a kind of a story walk. So you go from station to station, you'll read a bit of the story. There's experiential things in each station for, for you to take home with you. And it's just a way for you to begin to tell the story um, as we walk towards Easter. And we invite any, any families or grandparents with children to come, they're welcome to do that. And just at the labyrinth is there as well if you want to, to introduce your child to the labyrinth that's right next door in the gym. And I also wanna correct that I saw what went on in the email was on Monday, Tuesday, Monday through Wednesday is nine to four, it's actually nine to two. Um, and the, the, it's the same times, go on to, back to the next slide, Randy. Um, um, during the same times, Monday through Wednesday, 9 to 2, and Thursday and Friday, 5.30 to 7.30, the labyrinth is set up in the gym, and there's also a prayer vigil set up for people, uh, adults, and children in the fireside room. So that's available to you every day this week. Um, again, Monday through Wednesday, nine to two, Thursday and Friday, 5.30 to 7.30. And then we have two worship experiences. Maundy Thursday, um, April 1st at 6.30. These are both in the sanctuary, Maundy Thursday and Good Friday at 6.30, both days, in the sanctuary, we ask you please, RSVP, let us know you wanna come. So either call or email the church office um, so we have an idea of how many people to expect. Um, we need you to, um, we can accommodate up to 50 people here safely. Um, with social distancing and you must wear a mask the whole time you're in the building. And we will be enforcing that. And I'm just gonna put Joey on the spot. Do we have youth um, ushers to help with that? I know you've been talking to them. Okay, so we're gonna have some youth bouncers. <laughs> no, they're not bouncers, they're ushers. They're gonna help assist with 
um, helping you get situated and just make sure everybody has them. And we have masks here if you don't have one or you forget yours. We have one, we have them here for you. And we have hand cleaners and everything. Um, and this, the sanctuary is set up for social dis, socially distant seating. Um, so we, I look forward to seeing the peop, any, uh, those who want to come here on Thursday and Friday nights. Both of these services will also be live streamed over Zoom, and the link will be sent out this week for those services. Okay. That's all the announcements. This service embodies the sharp contrasts of Holy Week. In the entrance with the palms, we experience the joyous demonstration of loyalty to Jesus as he enters Jerusalem, including festive Palm Sunday music. And then we transition into the proclamation and response and the proclamation of the passion of Jesus in which we confront and respond to the story of Jesus' passion, including somber Passion Sunday music. There will be no sermon this morning. The message is contained in the story. And so we encourage you to listen closely. So welcome to this time of worship. Welcome if this is your first time with us or if you've been coming here for years. To the baptized and those not baptized, welcome. To members and non-members, welcome. Welcome to the doubters, the believers, and the doubting believers. Welcome if you are male or female, black or white, rich or poor, young or old, or somewhere between any of these. Welcome no matter who you love or who loves you. Welcome all to this time of worship. Good morning. I'm going to talk to the Trinity kids this morning. It's Mr. Randy. I've had so much fun making videos for you for your Trinity kids Sunday evening, and I'm get a special privilege to talk to you this morning. We are going to start this service um, with a celebration. So you have um, had some materials sent to your homes and if you can gather up the palm branches that you've made or I don't know, grab a house plant. No, wait, no, don't do that. Um, <laughs> grab something to wave in celebration um, and I'll sing you a little song to celebrate the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. Hosanna to the son of David, the king of Israel. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, our hope, today we joyfully acclaim Jesus, our Messiah and King. Help us to honor him every day 
so we may enjoy his kingship in the new Jerusalem, where he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Listen now to the proclamation of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. From the Gospel according to Mark, the 11th chapter, beginning in the first verse. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you. And immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it. And we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to him, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Here ends the lesson. Jesus. 
Let us pray. God, our Redeemer, you sent your Son to be born of a woman and to die for us on a cross. By your Holy Spirit, illumine our lives with your word so as the scripture is read this day, we may be reconciled and one holy to your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first lesson this morning is from Isaiah 50, verses 4 through 9a. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he awakens, awakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. Here ends the lesson. A reading from Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline, Incline your, your ear, ear to, me. to me. Rescue, Rescue me speedily. speedily. Be, a be a rock, rock of, of refuge, refuge for me. me. A, a strong, strong fortress, fortress to, to save, save me. me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take, Take me, me out, out of, of the net, net which, which is, is hidden, hidden for, me, for me, for you, you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. I hate, I hate those, those who pay regard, regard to vain idols, idols but, but I, I trust, trust in the Lord. In the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad in your steadfast love because you have seen my affliction and have taken heed of my adversities. You, you have, have not, not delivered, delivered me into, into the, the hand, hand of, the of the enemy. enemy. You, you have, have set, set my feet, feet in, in a broad, broad place. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye is wasted from grief, my soul and body also. For my, For my life, life is spent, spent with, with sorrow, sorrow and my, and my years, years with sighing. My, my strength fails because of my misery, and my bones waste away. away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I, I have passed out, out of the mind, mind with like, like one, one who is dead. dead. I have, I have become, become like, like a, a broken, broken vessel. vessel. For I hear the whispering of many terror all around as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But, but I, I trust, trust in, in you, you, O Lord. Lord. I, I say, you, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your, Let your face, face shine, shine on, on your servant. servant. Save, Save me through your, through your steadfast love. love. Glory, Glory to you, O Trinity, Trinity most holy and blessed, and blessed. One, one God, God now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen.
chapter 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Here ends the lesson. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him, for they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you. 
and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, the one who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared for the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said it to, he, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, 
truly, I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the very same. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but oh, that flesh, the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more, he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him, there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now, the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled.
high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another, not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah? the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophecy! So the guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed, and the servant girl, on seeing him, began to say to the bystanders, this man is one of them, but again he denied it. Then, after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept.
As soon as it was morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priest accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified.
Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they be began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who, crucified, who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was God's son. <laughs>
also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger and of Joseph and Salome. These used, to, these used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with Jesus to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day of the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought, the lin brought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had, never, that had been hewn out of the rock and then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. Thank you. 
God of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, you promise to hear us when we pray to you in faith with thanksgiving. We pray for one another, for our families and friends through whom we learn to love and to be loved. Thank you for all who care for us. Give us grace to serve Christ by serving our neighbors and our community, loving others as he loves us. We thank you for the unfailing love you hold out to everyone in Jesus Christ. Comfort and heal those in sorrow, need, sickness, or any other trouble. And today we especially lift up our sister, Amy Burgess. Give them courage and hope in their distress and bless those who minister to them. We remember with gratitude your many gifts to us in creation and the rich heritage of this nation. Help us and people everywhere to share with justice and peace the resources of the earth. Give wisdom to those in authority among us and to all leaders of the nations. We pray for your church throughout the world, thanking you for all who serve Christ and his kingdom. By your spirit, strengthen your people for their work and witness in the world. Unite us in your truth and love, that we who confess your name may also reflect your glory. We remember with thanksgiving all who have died in Christ, especially today our brother Richard Ilka. And we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may enter with them into the unending joy of your heavenly kingdom. Merciful God, you will look with compassion on all who turn to you. Hear our prayers, the prayers of your people. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may be by your grace received through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now to God who is able to do immeasurably more than we, ought, we can ask or conceive by the power which is at work among us, be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all ages. Amen. We thank you for your continued generosity and your giving in support of the mission and ministry of Trinity United Methodist Church, and we pray that you continue your giving generously because we wouldn't be here without it.
Let us pray. Eternal God, compassionate and merciful, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your boundless love and the redemption of the world by our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us that due sense of all your mercies, that our hearts may be truly thankful, and that we praise you not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray as Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Before I offer this dismissal with blessing, I need to recognize and give thanks for all of the readers this morning, for Judy Ryan, for Eve Ricketts and David Howard, for Jody, what's your name? Jacobson. <laughs> that Jacobson guy over there. Ja you know, I'm, I'm, I'm having a senior moment here, Joey. Joey, Joey Jacobson, Marita Tuminong, Nate and Micah Frost and Lainey Stewart. And thank you to Matt and to Randy and all of the singers and musicians that contributed to our worship this morning. And now, may Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven broken for all, bless you and keep you. Amen. May the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, heal and restore you. Amen. Amen. May the Lord God order all your days and deeds in peace. Amen. Amen. Go in the love to serve God and your neighbor in all things. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God.